Passion Travel is a channel specializing in all things travel street food and subscribe. Johnny Cakes. These fried or baked bread cakes made from flour, water, sugar, and salt are a Caribbean favorite. Johnny Cakes, also known as Journey Cakes, are a traditional Caribbean and American Southern food item that's enjoyed in various forms across different regions. These simple yet delicious cakes are made from a few basic ingredients and can be fried or baked. Here's more about Johnny Cakes. Ingredients. The basic ingredients for Johnny Cakes include flour. All-purpose flour is the primary dry ingredient used to make Johnny Cakes. Salt. A small amount of salt is added to enhance the flavor of the cakes. Fat. Traditional recipes use lard or shortening, while others may use butter or vegetable oil for a slightly different flavor. Liquid. Water or milk is used to bring the dough together and create the desired consistency. Preparation. Making Johnny Cakes is a straightforward process. Mixing. In a mixing bowl, combine the flour and salt. Cut in the fat, lard, shortening, or butter, until the mixture resembles coarse crumbs. Adding liquid. Gradually add the water or milk, a little at a time, and stir until the dough comes together. The dough should be soft and pliable but not overly sticky. Shaping. Divide the dough into small portions and shape them into rounds or small cakes. Some recipes call for flattening the cakes, while others keep them round. Cooking. Johnny cakes can be cooked by either frying or baking, depending on regional preferences. Frying. Heat a skillet or frying pan with a small amount of oil or fat over medium-high heat. Once hot, add the Johnny cakes and cook until they are golden brown on both sides, typically a few minutes per side. Drain on paper towels to remove excess oil. Baking. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 190 degrees Celsius. Place the shaped Johnny cakes on a baking sheet and bake for about 15 to 20 minutes or until they are golden brown. Variations. Johnny cakes can vary in texture and flavor depending on regional influences and personal preferences. Some variations include sweet Johnny cakes. These are made with a bit of sugar added to the dough, giving them a slightly sweet flavor. They are often served as a breakfast item with syrup or honey. Savory Johnny Cakes Traditional Johnny Cakes are savory and typically served with meats, stews, or seafood dishes. Cornmeal Johnny Cakes Some recipes incorporate cornmeal in addition to or in place of flour, giving the cakes a coarser texture. Roti A delicious flatbread filled with curried vegetables, meat, chicken, goat, or seafood, and potato. Roti is a type of unleavened flatbread that is widely enjoyed in various parts of the world, particularly in South Asia, the Caribbean, and parts of Africa. It is a simple yet versatile bread that can be served as a side dish, used to scoop up curries and stews, or filled with various ingredients to make wraps or sandwiches. Here's more about roti. Ingredients. The basic ingredients for making roti include flour. Roti is typically made from wheat flour, either whole wheat flour, atta, or a combination of whole wheat and all-purpose flour. The choice of flour can affect the texture and flavor of the roti. Water. Water is used to create the dough by mixing it with the flour. The amount of water can vary depending on the desired consistency of the dough. Salt. A small amount of salt is added to enhance the flavor of the roti. Fat. Some recipes include a small amount of fat, such as vegetable oil or ghee, in the dough for added softness and flavor. However, traditional roti recipes often omit this ingredient. Preparation. Making roti is a straightforward process. Mixing. In a mixing bowl, combine the flour and salt. Gradually add water and mix until the dough comes together. Knead the dough until it is smooth and elastic. If using fat, you can incorporate it during the kneading process. Resting. Allow the dough to rest for about 15 to 30 minutes. This resting period allows the gluten to relax, making it easier to roll out the roti. Dividing. Divide the dough into small portions, typically about the size of golf balls. Rolling. Roll each portion of dough into a thin, round disc. The goal is to achieve a very thin, even thickness. Cooking. Heat a griddle, flat pan, or tava over medium-high heat. Once hot, place a rolled-out roti on the griddle. Cook it for about 1 to 2 minutes on each side, or until it puffs up and develops golden brown spots. You can use a clean cloth or spatula to press gently on the roti as it cooks to encourage puffing. Optional ghee or butter. You can brush the cooked roti with ghee or butter for added flavor and richness. Grilled corn. 
enjoy freshly grilled corn on the cob, often brushed with butter and sprinkled with spices. Grilled corn, also known as corn on the cob, is a popular and delicious summer treat enjoyed in many parts of the world. Grilling corn enhances its natural sweetness and imparts a smoky flavor, making it a favorite side dish at barbecues and outdoor gatherings. Here's how to grill corn. Ingredients. Corn on the cob. Choose fresh, husked corn with the husk and silk removed. Instructions. Preheat the grill. Preheat your grill to medium-high heat, around 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 to 200 degrees Celsius. Make sure the grill grates are clean and well-oiled to prevent sticking. Prepare the corn. While the grill is heating, you can prepare the corn. Some people like to soak the corn in water for about 15 to 30 minutes before grilling to prevent the husks from burning, but this step is optional. Season, optional. Brush the corn with melted butter or olive oil and season it with salt and pepper. You can also add herbs, spices, or grated cheese for extra flavor. Grill the corn. Place the corn directly on the hot grill grates. You can either place them horizontally or vertically with the stock end facing down. Grill the corn for about 10 to 15 minutes, turning occasionally to ensure even cooking. Check for doneness. The corn is ready when the kernels are tender and have a slightly charred appearance. Be careful not to overcook it, as it can become mushy. Serve. Once the corn is grilled to perfection, remove it from the grill. You can serve it as is or with additional toppings like more butter, grated cheese, or a squeeze of fresh lime or lemon juice. Coconut shrimp. Crispy fried shrimp coated in coconut flakes, served with dipping sauce. Coconut shrimp is a popular appetizer or main dish that features large shrimp coated in a crispy, coconut-flavored breading. These succulent and flavorful shrimp are often served with a dipping sauce, making them a delightful addition to your menu. Here's how to make coconut shrimp. Ingredients. For the coconut shrimp. 1 pound large shrimp, peeled and deveined, with tails left on, about 20 to 24 shrimp. 1 cup shredded coconut, sweetened or unsweetened, depending on your preference. 1 cup panko breadcrumbs, or regular breadcrumbs. 1 half cup all-purpose flour. 2 large eggs. 1 half teaspoon salt. 1 quarter teaspoon black pepper. Vegetable oil for frying. For the dipping sauce. 1 half cup sweet chili sauce. 2 tablespoons mayonnaise. 1 teaspoon lime juice, optional, for a citrusy kick. Instructions. Prepare the dipping sauce. In a small bowl, combine the sweet chili sauce, mayonnaise, and lime juice, if using. Stir until well blended. Cover and refrigerate the sauce while you prepare the shrimp. Prepare the breading stations. In three separate shallow dishes, set up a breading station. Place the flour in the first dish, whisk the eggs in the second dish, and combine the shredded coconut, breadcrumbs, salt, and pepper in the third dish. Coat the shrimp. Working with one shrimp at a time, dredge it in the flour, shaking off any excess. Dip the floured shrimp into the beaten eggs, allowing any excess to drip off. Finally, coat the shrimp in the coconut breadcrumb mixture, pressing gently to adhere the breading. Set aside. Place the coated shrimp on a baking sheet or plate and repeat the process until all the shrimp are coated. Heat the oil. In a large skillet or frying pan, Heat enough vegetable oil to submerge the shrimp to about 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 175 minus 190 degrees Celsius. Use a thermometer to monitor the oil temperature. Fry the shrimp. Carefully place a few shrimp into the hot oil, making sure not to overcrowd the pan. Fry for 2 to 3 minutes on each side or until the shrimp are golden brown and crispy. Use a slotted spoon or tongs to transfer the cooked shrimp to a plate lined with paper towels to drain any excess oil. Repeat the frying process with the remaining shrimp. Rice and peas. A Caribbean staple. This dish features rice cooked with pigeon peas and coconut milk, often served with chicken or fish. Rice and peas is a classic and beloved Caribbean dish that combines fluffy white rice with tender pigeon peas, or kidney beans, cooked in flavorful coconut milk and spices. It's a staple in many Caribbean cuisines, including Jamaican, Trinidadian, and Barbadian. Here's how to make rice and peas. Ingredients. 1 cup long grain white rice, preferably parboiled. 1 cup canned pigeon peas, or kidney beans, drained and rinsed. 1 cup coconut milk, canned or fresh. 1 cup water. 2 to 3 cloves garlic, minced. 1 small onion, finely chopped. 
1 to 2 sprigs of fresh thyme or 1 half teaspoon dried thyme. 1 to 2 scotch bonnet peppers or habanero peppers, whole or sliced, adjust to your heat preference. Salt and black pepper to taste. 1 to 2 tablespoons vegetable oil or coconut oil, for sautéing. Optional. A few slices of ginger for added flavor. Instructions. Sauté aromatics. In a large, heavy bottomed pot or saucepan, heat the vegetable oil over medium heat. Add the minced garlic, chopped onion, and scotch bonnet or habanero pepper. Sauté for 2 to 3 minutes until the onions become translucent and fragrant. Add rice and spices. Add the washed rice to the pot, stirring to coat it with the aromatic mixture. Cook the rice for about 2 to 3 minutes until it becomes slightly translucent. Add coconut milk and water. Pour in the coconut milk and water, and add the drained pigeon peas, or kidney beans. Stir well to combine. If you're using fresh thyme or ginger, add them now. Season with salt and black pepper to taste. Simmer. Bring the mixture to a boil, then reduce the heat to low, cover the pot, and let it simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. Stir occasionally to prevent sticking. If the liquid is evaporating too quickly, you can add a bit more water. Check doneness. After about 20 to 25 minutes, the rice should be tender, and the liquid should be mostly absorbed. If the rice is not cooked to your desired level of tenderness, you can add a bit more water and continue to simmer, covered, until it's done. Remove scotch bonnet pepper. If you left the scotch bonnet or habanero pepper whole, remove it from the pot before serving. Be careful not to burst it, as it can be extremely spicy.